Hello everyone, today we are going to talk about the nomenclature of cycloalkanes. I would suggest that you watch till the end and do not skip in between because you might miss some important information and tricks. So let's begin our today's lecture. So cycloalkanes are cyclic molecules with no double or triple bonds in the rings. The basic rule for naming cycloalkane is to first count the number of carbon atoms in the ring and then add a prefix cyclo before the name of the corresponding alkane. The corresponding alkane means an alkane with equal number of carbon atoms as the number of carbon atoms in the ring. So the smallest ring that we can have is a three-membered ring with three carbon atoms so the corresponding alkane name is propane and we write a prefix in front of propane so it becomes cyclopropane for a four-membered ring the corresponding alkane would be butane and the prefix cyclo is added before butane so it becomes cyclobutane similarly a ring with five carbon atoms will be named as cyclopentane and a ring with six carbon atoms will be named as cyclohexane. So this is how you uh, assign parent names to these cyclic molecules. Now I'll discuss one by one the IUPAC rules. So the first rule is to count the number of carbon atoms in the ring. That is the basic first rule. and then you name the molecule accordingly using a prefix before the name of the corresponding alkane that has equal number of carbon atoms as the ring. So this ring has six carbon atoms. So the alkane, alkane name is hexane and we use the prefix cyclo so it becomes cyclohexane. Similarly, this is cyclobutane and this is cyclopentane. But these rings may be substituted as well. So if we have a substituent or more than one substituents present in on the ring then we have to identify the number and types of substituents uh, before naming the molecule right. <clears throat> and the next rule is to write the name of the substituent before the parent name. So if we have one substituent, we just write the name of that substituent before the parent name. So for example, this molecule has six carbons in the ring. So the corresponding alkane is hexane. And because it's a cyclic molecule, it becomes cyclohexane. But this is a substituted cyclohexane with a methyl substituent present on one of the carbon atoms so it becomes methyl cyclohexane. One thing you have to remember here is that you don't need to number the carbon atoms in such type of molecules in which the ring is mono substituted. When there is only one substituent present on the ring we don't need to number the carbon atoms in the ring so it, it's a simple methyl cyclohexane. right? If we have a five-membered ring with an ethyl substituent here, so it becomes ethyl cyclopentane. And if we have a substituted four-membered ring, so it becomes uh, cyclobutane with this methyl substituent, the full name would be methyl cyclobutane. Now, if we have more than one substituents present on the ring, if the ring is multi-substituted, like we have two substituents or three substituents, then you need to number the carbon atoms so as to show the positions of all the substituents present on the ring. In the previous case, when the ring was monosubstituted, we did not need to number the carbon atoms in the ring because the carbon atom to which the substituent was present was uh, is always has to be carbon number one because the numbering has to start from the substituted carbon atom. So if we have a mono substituted ring, the substituted carbon atom will always be carbon number one. But if we have more than one substituents, 
then the case is different. So we start the numbering from the substituted carbon atom and then we proceed uh, in a direction so as to give lowest position to all the rest of the substituents. Now we will discuss this or explain this with the help of uh, some examples. And then to write the name, uh, first we have to mention the position and names of all the substituents present. And finally, uh, we write the parent name that is the cycloalkane parent name. So for example, we have this molecule which has six carbon atoms in the ring. This is a cyclohexane ring with two substituents. And these are two methyl substituents uh, present at this carbon atom and this carbon atom. Now, as the rule suggests that the numbering will always start from a substituted carbon atom, we have two substituted carbon atoms. So we can start numbering either from this carbon or from this carbon atom. Now, from which of these two carbon atoms should we start numbering? That we will discuss. And then you have to proceed in a direction so as to give lowest position to the rest of the substituents. So if we start from this carbon, we can proceed in two different directions, like we can proceed in this direction, like this, clockwise, or we can proceed in this direction, anti-clockwise. So we have to follow that direction which gives the second substituent the lowest position. Or if we start from this carbon atom, again, we can proceed clockwise or anti-clockwise. So we'll see in a moment from which uh, carbon atom should we start numbering and in which direction we have to proceed. So the first case is that we start numbering from this substituted carbon atom and then we proceed clockwise. So this is one, two, three, four, five, and six. Now in this case, one of the substituent is at carbon number one, obviously, because we have started numbering from here and the second falls at carbon number four, right? So now you have to remember the first substituent is at one, the second is at four. We have to assign lowest position to this uh, carbon atom. If we start numbering from this carbon atom and we proceed anti-clockwise, what would be the case? So we start numbering from this carbon atom and now we proceed anti-clockwise, still the second substituent is at 4. So it doesn't matter in which direction you move when you start from this carbon atom, the second substituent will fall at carbon number 4. Now we can also start numbering from this carbon atom. So let's see what happens here. So we start numbering from here and we proceed anti-clockwise. So the second substituent falls at carbon number 4. But if we start numbering from here, and we proceed clockwise, again, the second substituent falls at carbon number four. So we have four different situations. We start numbering from this carbon, proceed clockwise or anti-clockwise, or we start numbering from here and proceed clockwise or anti-clockwise. So we have four different situations. And in all the four, you just saw that from both the uh, sides or from both the carb substituted carbon atoms, one of the substituent is at 1 and the other is at 4. Now it's up to you from where you want to start and in which direction you want to move because in all the four cases the positions are 1 and 4. So it's up to you uh, how you want to proceed and the name would be 1, 4, dimethyl because we have two methyl substituents so we add a prefix di before methyl before the name of the substituent and then the prefix cyclo for the cyclic structure and because there are six carbon atoms in the ring uh, we write the name of the corresponding alkane so it becomes 1,4 dimethyl cyclohexane and now you can see that the name remains the same if you start numbering from this carbon proceed clockwise or anti-clockwise or you start numbering from this carbon and proceed clockwise or anti-clockwise, right? But if we have this molecule, now we have two substituents on this cyclohexane ring. Both are methyl substituents and the positions relative to each other are different from this molecule. 
Now let's see what we have. So the simplest way to do is to uh, find out the sum of the positions of the two substituents and then you keep that sum which is the lowest for naming or numbering the carbon atoms. So I've written here L plus R. L means left, that is the carbon atom uh, to the left hand side which is substituted and R for the carbon atom to the right that is substituted. Right, so we have to uh, take the sum or find out the sum of the positions of L and R or the left side substituted carbon atom and the right hand side substituted carbon atom. Again, we have four different situations. Now let's see all of them. If we start numbering from here and proceed clockwise, like in this way, so this obviously is carbon number one and the second substituent falls at three. So we proceed clockwise and we start numbering from the left hand side from this carbon atom. One of the substituent is at one, the other is at position three. So the sum is four. Now if we proceed from the same carbon atom and proceed anti-clockwise. So this again, the left hand side carbon again is carbon number one, but now we proceed anti-clockwise and you see the second substituent falls at five and the sum is equal to six. If we start numbering from this carbon atom, the right hand side carbon, and proceed clockwise. So this is carbon number one, two, three, four, and five. So the second substituent falls at five, right? So the left hand side carbon uh, uh, has substituent and this is carbon number five in this case and obviously the right hand side carbon because we have started numbering from here is one so the sum is equal to six when we move clockwise from this carbon atom right but if we move anti-clockwise from here then the second substituent is at three so one plus three is equal to four now we have four different situations in which we start numbering either from here or from here and either we uh, proceed clockwise or anti-clockwise. Now in all of these sums you see that 2 are equal to 6 and 2 are equal to 4. So we ignore these two. That is the case in which we start from this carbon atom, the left hand side, and we proceed anti-clockwise. Or in the second case if we start numbering from here and we proceed clockwise. So you have to ignore these two because the sums are higher but we are left behind with these two in which the sums are lower and equal. Now it's up to you from where you want to start numbering. So we have to keep these two because they have the lowest sum. So what does it mean? Either you start from the left hand side here and proceed clockwise. So this will be one and this would be three like in this case. Or you start from this carbon atom, the right hand side is equal to 1 and then you proceed anti-clockwise so the second substituent will be at 3. Now it's up to you which of these two you follow. So the final name would be 1,3-dimethylcyclohexane. So either you start from here and proceed clockwise, still it will be 1,3-dimethylcyclohexane or you start from here and proceed anti-clockwise, still it will be 1,3-dimethylcyclohexane. You cannot write the name as 1,5-dimethylcyclohexane. That is wrong, right? Now, if we have two different substituents, like in the previous case we had two substituents but both were methyl substituents, so we just uh, uh, kept in mind the position of the two substituents. But if we have two different substituents, then we follow the alphabetical order, right? And the numbering proceeds in a direction so as to give the other substituent the lowest position. What does this rule number six mean? Is that you start numbering from that carbon atom which has a substituent that comes first in the alphabetical order right so that will always be your carbon number one and then you proceed in a direction either clockwise or anti-clockwise 
to give lowest position to the second substituent. So let's see this with the help of an example. We have again a cyclohexane ring with two different substituents, a methyl substituent and an ethyl substituent in this case, right? So as rule number six says that alphabetical order will be followed. So you will always have to start numbering from this carbon atom. This will be your carbon number one. And then you can proceed in two different directions, either clockwise or anti-clockwise. So if we move clockwise, the second substituent falls at three. And if we move anti-clockwise, the second substituent falls at five. So we have to proceed in a direction so as to give the lowest position to the second substituent. So the correct numbering order would be one, two, and three. So this would be one ethyl, three methyl cyclohexane, right? So this is the only way you can number this uh, ring because it has two different substituents and both have uh, this methyl group has different uh, positions when you proceed clockwise or anti-clockwise. So you cannot proceed in this direction, right? Now in this second example, you see again, we have uh, two different substituents, an ethyl substituent and a methyl substituent, right? So according to rule number six, you have to follow alphabetical order. So this will always be carbon number one, and then you proceed either clockwise or anti-clockwise. So if you proceed clockwise, this methyl substituent falls at four, and if you proceed anti-clockwise, again, it falls at four. Now it's up to you in which direction you proceed, but you will always start numbering from this carbon atom. So this will always be carbon number one, and in this example, you can either proceed clockwise or anti-clockwise. You will have the same position for the methyl substituent. So this would be one ethyl four methyl cyclohexane. So this is how you can uh, name cyclic molecules. You can have more than two substituents uh, present on the ring. And again, you have to first follow the alphabetical order uh, and then proceed in a direction so as to give lowest position to the uh, other substituents. But before alphabetical order, if you have like three substituents, first you have to find out a position from which you get lowest uh, locants or positions uh, or you can assign lowest position to all the substituents. If that is not the case, then you follow the alphabetical order. If you have similar positions uh, from all the three substituents, then you follow alphabetical order. Otherwise, first you have to keep in mind the positions. If that is different, then you follow that order. If the positions are same from all the three substituents, then you follow alphabetical order and then you proceed in a direction so as to give lowest locant to other substituents. I hope it helped. If still you have some problem, you can ask me anytime. Thank you so much.